Hey, I'm Lucas and welcome to Tick Tick Tier Stick, where I'll answer one of your Tick Tick questions in a video or share a helpful trick that I found myself. Matt wants to know how to set up a morning routine, initially inquiring about a way to use subtasks for it. But in my opinion, this is best done via Tick Tick's habits feature. So in this video, I'll explain how to use it and take Matt's question as a blueprint for filling it out. You can activate Tick Tick's habits feature by navigating to the settings, navigating to preference and then features to toggle along the habits view. Habits in TickTick are a separate taxonomy, a different kind of object compared to tasks altogether. They cannot be parked under a list. They have their own separate space on the left-hand side in the shape of a geopin with a clock in it. Since Matt mentioned he wants to keep track of what he did and what he skipped, the habits feature with its advanced logging functionality fits this requirement perfectly, as you'll see later down the road. Let's look at Matt's morning routine and set it up using habits. We'll take the three example behaviors he wants to log and create separate habits for each. Calisthenics, showering and eating breakfast. The first thing we'll want to do is create a habits section to group these three behaviors together. By pressing the plus shaped symbol, we can create a new habit which includes the option to create a section. Let's do that first. There are already three default morning, afternoon and night options present. But to show you how it works, we'll press add section and call it morning routine. Saving it, we'll park our newly created habit under this section. But of course we weren't done, so let's move to the right which allows us to edit it using the same menu. Let's begin with calisthenics. We can first set up a custom symbol for this habit. Let's go with the person doing a push up. Press OK and then you can name your habit. I'm going to go with an activating language. So instead of just saying calisthenics, I'm going to use perform calisthenics workout. Now we've arrived at frequency where we can ask ourselves how often do we want to perform this behavior? The first question to ask ourselves is do we want to perform and repeat this behavior at an exact time? Or do we just want to reach a certain amount of repetitions per week? If you want to perform it on specific days, use the days option and select the days of the week. You'll be prompted to perform the habit only on those days. Alternatively, you can use interval to select every X amount of days, regardless of which day of the week that turns out to be. If instead you're going for a certain amount, no matter when, you can select the weekly option and fill out how many days per week you want to complete it. Your completion rate is going to be judged based on how many times you ticked off the habit by the end of the week. Let's assume Matt has a schedule that he wants to fit this habit into and select daily, then Monday, Wednesday and Friday. If these videos aren't enough for you, you want to get more free tick tick tips, hacks and tricks. You can subscribe to my free Tick Tick Tuesday email course. The link's going to be in the description. You'll get one Tick Tick tip delivered to your inbox every Tuesday. Next up, we can look at the goal feature, which is relevant if we want to perform a behavior more than once per day. If not, you can just stick with achieve it all, which is what we'll go with in this example. But we're going to look at how this works in just a moment. Start date allows you to define from which moment TickTick is expected to measure the habit onwards. This can also be set retroactively in case you were already committed to a habit but just haven't gotten around to logging it yet. Goal Days asks the question, for how long do you want to measure this habit? At some point, you may no longer need TickTick to remind you. You've successfully automated the behavior. You can plan this by setting up a certain number of days you want to measure the habit for or keep it indefinitely by using forever. And don't worry, you can always manually archive a habit to end it immediately. The habit is still positioned under morning routine section, which is good. Under reminder, you can get TickTick to prompt you with a notification to perform the habit at a specific time of the day or even multiple times. Since this is a morning routine and Matt has a schedule, let's set this to 8.30 a.m., indicating he should begin the workout shortly. Lastly, there's a small checkbox which says Auto Pop-Up of Habit Log. Checking this allows you to enter a reflection each time you check off a habit, 
which will be stored in the habits log on the right hand side. Let's turn it on, allowing Matt to look back on his workout. Before we continue with organizing habits, let's explore the goal feature in more detail. Since it doesn't make sense to use more than one instance daily for the workout example, let's zoom in a bit and log a specific exercise which you want to perform for a certain number of sets. Let's use perform a set of 10 pull-ups and add it as a new habit. We'll align it with the calisthenics workout habit by applying the same settings everywhere else, but in the goal section, we'll add some specificity to it. Instead of achieve it all, we'll select reach a certain amount. Let's say Matt wants to do three sets of 10 pull-ups, which changes the goal to three instances per day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you leave when checking on manual, It'll mark one out of three instances complete every time the habit is checked, which will go with here. However, you can go even further by selecting auto. From there, you can actually edit the number of completed behaviors logged every time you check off a habit. And this gets absurdly specific. For example, you can actually add a decimal point to mark off 1.2 instances of a habit each time you check it. Alternatively, you can select complete all, which immediately marks the predefined number of instances complete at once for the day. If you want to learn how to build an entire productivity system inside of TickTick, consider enrolling in my TickTick Power User course. It outlines my entire system from A to Z, a system that's helped hundreds of others who've gone before you and have left raving reviews. It's working pretty well for a lot of people. It's not a course where you're forced to copy my entire system literally one-to-one. -one. Instead, it should serve to inspire you and hopefully save you some time as well. You may not even need to follow me on YouTube anymore after completing the course. And that's my goal. I want to help you get to a state of peak productivity as soon as possible. If that's through these YouTube videos, that's totally fine. If it's through email, that's great. But if you are willing to invest a little, you may just see returns on your investment a lot more quickly. So check out the course link in the description to see if it's a good fit for you. You can have habits displayed along with tasks in the time-based smart lists like the today view by navigating the settings from the habits view. However, its separation from a regular task is still preserved and indicated as shown in a different section and with a different symbol on mobile widgets. Similar to lists, habits are organized into sections. It's entirely up to you how you want to categorize your habits. TickTick -tick pushes for you to do it based on time with its default sections, but you could also do it based on a specific focus area in your life, difficulty, or context. Create sections that make sense to you. Not grouping it into a section parks a habit into the others section. Archiving a habit doesn't delete it, but instead moves it into the archived dimension. Archiving it means it won't be actively tracked or prompted anymore, but you can look back on it by selecting it from the archive button. TickTick -tick makes it easy to mark habits complete by presenting them alongside tasks as mentioned before, but you can also set up widgets. These will look differently depending on your device and operating system, but there are a couple that are dedicated to marking habits complete, including on the go. After you've begun checking off your habits, navigating to the habits section will allow you to view statistics to see how you're progressing. Monthly check-ins is a simple count of how many times you pressed complete, and in my opinion is not very useful. What's more useful is your check-in rate which compares it to the goal you've set for yourself and expresses it as a percentage. Your completion count is based on the goal days option explained before. So four check-ins for three completions make 12 completions total. In the left column, you can see what I consider to be vanity metrics, like total number of check-ins, a streak count, and total completion count. I don't pay too much attention to those. In the end, it's up to you how you want to use habits and what completion percentage you're satisfied with. I do recommend a minimal approach, standing towards removing habits from TickTick as opposed to adding too many. If you don't, you'll be overwhelmed before you know it. Use habits as a tool, temporarily, for building new behaviors, but don't become enslaved to the checkbox. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any more questions about this particular topic, leave it in the comments, as well as any other questions you may have about TikTok in general.
you may just see yourself getting features with your question in a future video. Thanks for watching and see you next Tuesday.